everyone in this session we are going to solve the most important questions including pyqs of the chapter light reflection and refraction yes my dear students let's get started let me solve the one mark questions now first question is a light ray enters from medium a to medium b as shown in figure comment on the refractive index of the medium b with respect to refractive index of medium a and the options given are greater than unity less than unity equal to unity zero you can see here a ray of light is entering from medium a to medium b so here the refraction has taken place you can see here this ray of light has bent towards the normal so that the refractive index of the medium b is more which means the speed of light in this medium is less so what they have asked here is comment on the refractive index of medium b with respect to the refractive index of medium a as the speed of light in this medium is less when compared to medium a then the refractive index must be greater than unity so the answer is a that is greater than unity because we know that refractive index of medium b it is given by speed of light in medium a divided by speed of light in medium b you can see here as the ray of light has bent towards the normal it shows that it has less speed of light when compared to the medium a so this one is more when compared to the this means speed of light in medium a is more than speed of light in medium b because of which this term because of which this term is greater than 1 means it is greater than unity refractive index of medium b is greater than unity so let's go to the next question study the given ray diagrams and select the correct statement from the following here are the options given first let us analyze this ray diagram in this first ray diagram what has happened the parallel beam of light is coming from the object and after passing through this device they are converging at this point which means the image is formed here in the second case a parallel beam of light from the object which is kept at infinity these rays of light of the reflection from this device they are converging at this point so the image is formed here and also you can see here as these rays are converging at this point which shows this is the focal length of the device x and this is the focal length of the device y and also see here in the x device the rays are getting refracted here in this case the rays are getting reflected this shows that this device is convex lens we know that in con in convex lens when a parallel beam of light which is coming from the object which is kept at infinity after refraction from the convex lens they meet at a point that is these rays of light will converge at a point on the principal focus and it forms a real and inverted image so this device is convex lens and it is having focal length 20 cm see here in this device what's happening here a parallel beam of light which is coming from the object at infinity of reflection through this device these rays of light are converging here which shows that it is a concave mirror because in case of concave mirror we know the real and inverted image is formed here actually the rays are meeting from this we can understand that the real and inverted image is formed here as the rays are converging at this point we can come to know that this is the focal length of this mirror so this device is concave mirror and it has focal length 25 cm you have to observe the diagram properly whether the reflection is taking place whether the refraction is taking place 
and what type of rays are incident on it. You have to observe all these. And you have to observe the point at which these rays are converging. So that in case of convex lens, the rays are getting converged when a parallel beam of light is incident on the convex lens. And also we know that when a parallel beam of light is incident on concave mirror, the rays of light after reflection, they are going to converge. From this we can understand these are convex lens and concave mirror respectively. So let's see the options here. Device X is a concave mirror and device Y is a con convex lens whose focal lengths are 20 cm and 25 cm respectively. No, this is wrong option because this is not mirror. This is lens. This is wrong option. Device X is a convex lens and device Y is a concave mirror whose focal lengths are 10 cm and 25 cm respectively. They have given wrong focal lens here. So, this option is also wrong. Device X is a concave lens and device Y is a convex mirror whose focal lengths are 20 cm and 25 cm respectively. This is also wrong. So, now device X is a convex lens and device Y is a concave mirror whose focal lengths are 20 cm and 25 cm respectively. Yes, this is our correct answer. Let's read the, let's read the next question. Which of the following is not a characteristic of rear view mirror in a car? We know that in vehicles, what type of mirror is used? The mirror used is convex mirror. Why are we using convex mirror here? Because it forms erect image and it will give the wider field of view. It gives the images of distant objects, full size image of the distant object so that it will give wider field of view so that we will use convex mirror let's see let's see here which of the following is not a characteristics of rear view mirror in a car they have asked it is not a characteristic of rear view mirror convex in nature yes we use convex mirror in vehicles and concave in nature no we are not using concave mirror there so it is not a characteristic then they have wider field of coverage. Yes, we want wider field of view so that we are using convex mirror there. And they give a virtual image. The image is formed behind the mirror. So, among these options, the one which is not a characteristic of rear view mirror is concave in nature. It is not concave in nature. Yes. Let us read the next question. Light enters from air to turpentine oil having refractive index 1.47. What is the speed of light in the turpentine oil? We have the formula of refractive index given by N is equal to C by V. It is the refractive index of any medium with respect to air or vacuum. C is the speed of light in air. V is the speed of light in any medium. They have given the refractive index of the turpentine oil and asked to calculate the speed of light in the turpentine oil. Let's calculate. So, V is equal to C by N. C means it is the, it is the speed of light in air which is given by 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Now, refractive index already they have given 1.47. So, when you solve this, your answer will be 2.04 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So, which will be our right answer? This is the right answer. You have to remember this formula. This is the refractive index of any medium with respect to air or vacuum. Next question is the real, sorry. Next question is the image formed by a concave mirror is observed to be real inverted and of the same size as that of the object. Where should be the position of the object? Understand the question properly here. It is given that we are using concave mirror and the image formed is real inverted and of the same size. So, they have asked the position of the object where it should be in order to get the image of the same size. We have seen the image formation by concave mirrors. 
in case of concave mirror when the object is placed at exactly the center of curvature then we will get the image that is real inverted and of the same size as that of the object so the correct answer will be the object should be placed at center of curvature so the option b is right answer the next question is the image of an object formed by converging lens is virtual erect and magnified what is the position of the object in front of the lens here what they have given the image formed is virtual erect and it is magnified in case of convex lens converging lens means convex lens we know that in case of the convex lens the virtual image is formed only when the object is placed between principal focus and the optical center you can see here this is convex lens this is optical center when the object between optical center and principal focus is placed we can consider two rays here one ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction it will pass through the second principal focus and you may consider another ray here passing through the optical center and it will move undeviated you can see here these two are diverging rays so they are not going to meet anywhere because of which we can see here they appear as if they are going to meet at this point they are not meeting actually but they are appearing to meet here so we say here the virtual image is formed and you can see here it is erect this is virtual erect and also it is magnified so this happens only when the object is placed between principal focus and optical center so the right answer will be between principal focus and optical center the seventh question is consider the following properties of the virtual images virtual images a cannot be projected on screen b are formed by both concave and convex lens c are always erect d are always inverted the correct options are they have given these options so we know that virtual images they cannot be obtained on screen virtual images they cannot be obtained on screen and also we know that these images are erect virtual images are erect and also we have seen while studying the image formation by concave and convex lens that the virtual images can be formed by both concave and convex lens so this a that is cannot be obtained uh, projected on screen is also correct are formed by both concave and convex lens this is also correct or always erect this is also correct d are always inverted no they are not inverted they are erect virtual images are erect so among these which is the right answer a b and c a b and c this is the right answer now see here which of the following statements is not true in reference to the diagram shown below image formed is real image formed is enlarged image formed is at a distance equal to double the focal length image formed is inverted first let's check where the image is formed let us consider two rays here one parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will pass through the principal focus one more ray here which is passing through the principal focus after reflection what happens it will move parallel to the principal axis the ray passing through the principal focus after reflection it will move parallel to the principal axis now here these two rays are meeting at this point so this is where the image is formed how is this image it is of the same size as that of the object and it is inverted we know that this image is formed at a distance equal to double the focal length this is the focal length the distance between principal focus and pole it is called as focal length this distance is double the focal length now let us check the options here image formed is real yes this is real 
because it is formed by the meeting of the rays here. Actually, the reflected rays are meeting here. So, the image formed is real. Image formed is enlarged. No, the image formed is not enlarged. It is of the same size as that of the object. Image formed is at a distance equal to double the focal length. Yes, this is also correct. Image formed is inverted. Yes, this image is inverted. So, what they have given? This statement which is not true. We have to take that option. So, that this is the answer. The image formed is enlarged. It is not true because the image formed here is of the same size. So, this will be our right answer. Now, list four characteristics of the image formed by convex lens of focal length 20 cm. When the object is placed in front of it at a distance of 10 cm from the optical center. Now, they have given that this is a convex lens having focal length 20 cm. Means the distance between the optical center and principal focus is 20 cm. And the object is placed in front of it at a distance of 10 cm from its optical center. From this point, the object is placed here. 10 cm from the optical center. So, here you can observe that the object is placed in between the principal focus and the optical center. So, now let us see how the image will be formed. We have to write the characteristics of the image. We have to consider here two rays. One ray which is parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will pass through principal focus that is second principal focus. Another one ray which is passing through the optical center, it will go undeviated. See here, these two rays are diverging. They are not going to meet anywhere. So, we can see here, these two are not converging rays. They are diverging rays. They are not going to meet anywhere. You can see here, they appear to meet at this point. Actually, they are not meeting. They appear to meet here. These two rays appear to meet at this point. At this point, the virtual image is formed. And how is this image? It is virtual, it is erect. And also when compared it with the object size, it is enlarged. And also it is formed on the same side of the lens. So you can write the characteristics. Like, right? so you can write the characteristics here. The image formed is virtual. Because the rays are not actually meeting here, they appear to meet here. And you can see here, this is enlarged. Image is enlarged. And also it is erect. The object is also like this. The image is also like this. So, it is upright. And it is formed on the same size as that of the lens. And it is formed on the same side as that of lens. It is formed on the same side as that of the lens. This is about the characteristics of the image formed. Yes? Now, next question is, array of light moving along the principal axis is falling on a concave mirror. In which direction is it reflected? This is concave mirror. This is concave mirror. What they have given? A ray of light moving along the principal axis is falling on the concave mirror. This ray of light is moving along the principal axis. After reflection, where it will move? They have asked in which direction is it reflected? So this ray of light will be reflected along the same path. That is, it will retrace the path. As the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. It is making an angle of 0 with the normal in case of angle of incidence. And also the reflected ray also makes an angle 0 degree with the normal. The ray of light moving along the principal axis after reflection from the concave mirror retraces the same path means it will move along the same path. The next question is a ray of light traveling from a medium X enters obliquely into another medium Y. 
If it bends away from the normal, then which one of the two is relatively optically denser? This is the interface between the two media. This is medium X, this is medium Y. This is the normal. Now, area of light which is falling obliquely at the interface and after refraction it will bend away from the normal. Means it will bend in this way, away from the normal. Then we have to tell that which one of the two medium is relatively optically denser. Among these two, which one is optically denser medium? We know that whenever a ray of light after refraction, it bends towards the normal, then that medium is optically denser. Here what's happening? The ray of light is bending away from the normal, which means this medium is optically rarer when compared to X. Because the speed of light in this medium is less when compared to the speed of light in this medium. Because of which this medium will be rarer medium. So the answer is medium is optically rarer medium and medium X is optically denser medium. As the ray of light falling obliquely into medium Y from medium X is bent away from the normal. And whenever a ray of light bends away from the normal, it shows that that medium is optically rarer medium and the other medium is optically denser medium. So, this medium is optically denser and this medium is optically rarer. Now, what are the two factors on which displacement of an emergent ray from a glass slab depends? The displacement or the lateral shift or the lateral displacement is depending on the thickness of the glass slab. It also depends on the angle of incidence and refractive index of the glass slab. Yes, the displacement of an emergent ray from a glass slab depends on it depends on refractive index of the glass. You can write any to the angle of incidence. The more the angle of incidence, the more is the lateral shift. Now, why are concave mirrors used in solar furnaces? We know that concave mirrors are converging mirrors. Whenever a parallel beam of light is incident on these concave mirrors, they get reflected and converge at a point. In solar furnace, we are making use of sunlight. We are going to trap the heat coming from the sunlight. So, here concave mirrors are used so that the parallel beam of light that is rays of light which are coming from the sun, they are trapped at a single point and we can easily generate the heat from those rays. Concave mirrors converges the parallel rays of light at the focus of the reflection. Hence, in solar furnaces, the concave mirror is used so that the sun rays of the reflection from the mirror surface get converged at focus with much intense heat and solar furnace becomes very hot and can be used. So, the parallel rays which are coming from the sun, they of the reflection, they will converge at the focus of the concave mirror. So, intense heat is produced which can be used in solar furnaces, converges. Yes, this is why we are using concave mirrors in solar furnaces. Next, draw the following diagram in which a ray of light is incident on a concave or convex mirror on your answer sheet. Show the path of this ray of the reflection in each case. See here, this is a concave mirror. This is convex mirror and this is convex mirror. They have given the incident ray here. We have to show the how this incident ray is reflected in all these mirrors. This is the principal focus of this mirror. This is the principal focus of this convex mirror and this is principal focus of this convex mirror. We know that whenever a ray of light passes through the principal focus in case of concave mirror, it will get reflected 
and the reflected ray will come parallel to the we know that in case of concave mirror whenever a ray of light is incident along the principal focus that ray of light after reflection it will come parallel to the principal axis so this ray of light which is along the principal focus it will emerge parallel to the principal axis this is the reflected ray and this is convex mirror whenever a ray of light is incident which is along the principal focus that is directed towards the principal focus this ray of light after reflection will emerge parallel to the principal axis this is the reflected ray in case of convex mirror and here is also this is convex mirror this ray of light is incident obliquely at the point p that is pole and the reflected ray will go obliquely in this way we will show the reflected ray for all these see here in case of concave mirror a ray of light incident along the principal focus will emerge parallel to the principal axis of the reflection and in case of convex mirror a ray of light which is directed towards the principal focus of the reflection it will come parallel to the principal axis and here the ray which is obliquely falling at the point p that is pole will reflected obliquely this is how we show the reflected ray the next question is state the laws of refraction of light explain the term absolute refractive index of a medium and write an expression to relate it with the speed of light in vacuum the laws of refraction states that the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal at the point of interface all these lie in a single plane the second law of refraction states that the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is equal to constant means it is constant see here this is the first law of refraction the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal to the interface of two transparent media at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane next the ratio of sin of angle of incidence to the sin of angle of refraction is a constant for the light of given color and for given pair of media now also they have asked what do we mean by absolute refractive index we know that absolute refractive index is the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in that medium this is a refractive that is absolute refractive index of the medium it is equal to speed of light in vacuum and speed of light in that medium next question child is standing in front of a magic mirror she finds the image of her head bigger the middle portion of her body of the same size and that of legs smaller explain the construction of the magic mirror using different types of mirror see here when the child is standing in front of the magic mirror she finds the image of her head which is bigger child head it will appear bigger this shows that her image of the head is enlarged so in what type of mirror do we get the enlarged images in case of concave mirrors so the mirror at the upper part of magic mirror must be concave yes and the middle portion of her body is of the same size child's middle portion it is of the same size so what kind of mirror must be used in order to get the same size as that of the object we use the plane mirrors in case of plane mirrors the images of the same size as that of object are obtained so the mirror at the middle of magic mirror is plane mirror then her legs looks smaller means the image of her legs is diminished child's legs they appear smaller means 
they have diminished in which type of mirrors do we get the diminished image in case of convex mirror so so the mirror at the bottom of magic mirror is made of convex mirror in order to get the enlarged images we use concave mirrors if the image is diminished then it shows that it is of convex mirror and in case of plane mirror we will get the image size same as that of object this is how the construction of magic mirror is made using different types of mirrors next for the same angle of incidence of 45 degree the refraction angle in two transparent media p and q is 20 degree and 30 degree respectively which of the two is optical denser and why see here there are two medium two media this angle is 20 degree this angle is 20 degree and this angle is 30 degree it is in case of medium p this is in case of medium q the angle of incidence is same in both the cases that is 45 degree you can see here in this case that is in the medium p the extent of bending is more when compared to the medium q this shows that this medium is optically denser when compared to this medium because here the extent of bending is less when compared to the medium p hence for same angle of incidence the angle of refraction refraction medium p is less than the angle of refraction in medium q hence which means there is more bending in medium p than that of q as here there is more bending when compared to this medium so this medium is denser when compared to the medium q hence medium p is denser that is optically denser than medium q more the bending more will be the optical density less the bending less will be the optical density we also see here they have asked to define one diopter power of lens we know that when the power of lens is one diopter we define it as the power of lens of focal length 1 meter. So the answer for B is the power of lens of focal length 1 meter is called 1 diopter. And also they have asked to find the focal length of a lens of power plus 0 0.5 diopter. We know that how to find the focal length. The power of lens is related to focal length as P is equal to 1 upon F. So, F is equal to 1 upon P. 1 by 0.5, it is equal to 2 meter. So, F is equal to 2 meters. Next question. Answer the following question. Figure shows a concave mirror with its pole at P, focus F and center of curvature C. Draw a ray diagram to show the formation of image of an object A and B. Let's draw it again. Now for the formation of image, we require at least two rays. So let's consider here a parallel ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, this parallel ray of light will move along the principal focus. Now consider one more ray here which is passing through the principal focus. We know that a ray of light passing through the principal focus after reflection from the concave mirror, it will move 
parallel to the principal axis. So this is one more ray. After reflection, it will move parallel to the principal axis. So this is the point at which these two rays are meeting. This is the point at which these two rays are meeting. So the image is formed here between C and F. And what are the characteristics of this image? Actually, it, this image is formed by the meeting of the reflected rays. The reflected rays are met here. So, here is the image formed. The real image is formed and this real image is inverted. And also you can see here this image is diminished. It is smaller than that of the object. So, the size of the object is diminished. This is one character. And where is this image formed? It is formed between C and F. Between C and F. These are the characteristics of the image formed. When the object is placed behind center of curvature. Now, area of light is incident on a convex mirror as shown. Redraw the diagram and complete the path of this ray after reflection of the mirror. Mark the angle of incidence. And angle of reflection on it. Yes. This is the convex mirror. This is pole. This is principal focus. This is center of curvature. This is the parallel ray of light falling on the convex mirror. After reflection, how will it pass? It will get reflected like this. Which is directed towards the principal focus. You can see here. This ray of light is directed towards the principal focus. In this way, this ray of light will get reflected because we know that according to the rule, the ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis of the reflection from the convex mirror, it will get reflected so that it is directed towards the principal focus. Now, light enters from air to glass having refractive index 1.50. What is the speed of light in glass? The speed of light in vacuum is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. See here we know the formula N is equal to C by V. N is the refractive index of the medium. C is the speed of light in vacuum. V is the speed of light in that medium. They have given the speed of light in vacuum. This quantity is given. And also they have given the refractive index the glass. So, we have to find out this that is speed of light in glass. So, V is given by C by N which is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second divided by 1.5. It will be 2 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. This is the speed of light in glass. The next question is, an object 4 cm in height is placed at 15 cm in front of concave mirror of focal length 10 cm. At what distance from the mirror should a screen be placed to obtain a sharp image of the object? Calculate the height of the image. We have to calculate the image distance here and also height of the image formed. Yes, let us write what are the given quantities here. Height of the Object is given 4 cm and also they have given the distance of the object. We know that object distance is written in negative sign as it is placed on left side of the mirror. Focal length is equal to minus 10 cm as focal length of concave mirror is in negative sign. Now let us apply the mirror formula here. We have to calculate the image distance here. 1 upon V is equal to 1 upon F minus 1 upon U. It will be 1 upon minus 10 minus 1 upon the object distance is minus 15. So it will be, it will be minus 1 by 30. So 1 upon V is equal to minus 1 upon 30 that is V is equal to minus 30 centimeter. So, so
so the screen should be placed at a distance of 30 cm in front of the mirror in order to obtain a sharp image of the object to obtain sharp image of the object and also they have asked to calculate the height of the image we know that from the magnification formula m is equal to height of the image by height of the object which is equal to image distance by object distance so from this we can calculate the height of the image so height of the image is equal to height of the object into what is the height of the object it is given 4 cm 4 into minus what is the image distance it is minus 30 cm that is minus 30 divided by object distance it is given here it is 15 so it will be minus 8 cm means the image that is obtained is inverted so it is obtained in the negative sign so the height of the image will be minus 8 cm and this negative sign indicates that this is inverted image it is formed below the principal axis the, now the next question is define the principal focus of a concave mirror it is desired to obtain an erect image of an object using a concave mirror of focal length 12 cm what should be the range of object distance in the above case why do we prefer a convex mirror as a rear view mirror in vehicle list two reason we know that how do we define principal focus it is the point on the principal axis where the rays of light incident parallel to the principal axis of the concave mirror converge whenever a parallel beam of light is incident on the concave mirror after reflection these rays are converged at a point on the principal axis that point is called as principal focus we know that in case of concave mirror the parallel rays incident on it after reflection they are going to converge at a point on the principal axis and this point on the principal axis is called as principal focus these are incident ray and these are reflected ray reflected rays which are going to meet at this point this is this point is called as principal focus again they have asked that it is desired to obtain an erect image of an object using a concave mirror of focal length 12 cm what should be the range of the object distance in the above case why do we prefer a convex mirror as a rear view mirror in vehicle list two reason there are two more questions here this is another question yes in order to obtain the erect image in case of concave mirror we will place the object in between principal focus and pole in that case virtual and erect image is obtained so they have given here the focal length is 12 cm Suppose this is concave mirror, this is pole, this is principal focus. Whenever the object is placed in between the pole and principal focus, in that case we will obtain virtual and erect image. Already they have given the focal length here, it is 12 cm. So where must be the object must be placed in order to get the erect image? It should be placed in between F and P. That is, it should be placed in between 0 cm to 12 cm on the principal axis. So that we will get virtual and erect image. Concave mirror produces virtual and erect image it, when it is placed between when it is concave mirror produces virtual and erect image when it is placed between principal focus and pole of the mirror and hence the range of the object distance for getting erect image is from 0 to 12 cm when it is placed in between 0 and 12 we, we are going to get the erect and virtual image this is the answer
Also, they have asked why do we prefer a convex mirror as a rear view mirror in vehicle? List two reason. The main reason is that convex mirror produces direct images and also it produces wider field of view. We can see the full size of the distant objects on the mirror and also they are erect in nature. As it covers the wider field of view, we use convex mirrors for vehicles. These are the two reasons. Convex mirror produces virtual and direct image and it produces wider field of view. It forms full size image of distant objects. Yes? Next question is, a real image, two-third two -third of the size of the object is formed by convex lens when the object is at a distance of 12 cm from it. Find the focal length of the lens. Here they have given, this real image is two-third of the size of the object. So, height of the image is equal to two-third the height of the object. And object distance is u is equal to minus 12 centimeter. We know that object distance is taken as negative as it is placed on the left side of the lens. Now we have to find out the focal length. To find the focal length, we should know the image distance also. Yes, how can we calculate this? We know from the magnification formula m is equal to height of the image by height of the object which is equal to v upon u as they have given real image is formed which means the height of the image will be in the negative sign as it forms inverted image so let us calculate the image distance here so v is equal to height of the image into u divided by height of the object. So, height of the image by height of the object is equal to minus 2 by 3 height of the object by height of the object. We get this ratio as minus 2 by 3. So, it is equal to minus 2 by 3 into height of the object. It is given minus 12. It will be 8 centimeter. The image distance is 8 centimeter. Now we can easily calculate the focal length of the lens. So 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u. This is from lens formula. So 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon 8 minus 1 upon minus 12. It is equal to 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 12. f is equal to 24 by 5. It will be 4.8 centimeter. So the focal length of the lens is 4.8 centimeter. Of the lens is equal to 4.8 centimeter. Yes. Next, the question is: an object is placed at a distance of 10 centimeter from a convex mirror of focal length 15 centimeter. Find the position and nature of the image. We have to calculate the image distance here and we have to tell the nature of that image and also where it is formed. So object distance u is equal to minus 10 centimeter and focal length f is equal to 15 centimeter. And we have taken here plus sign because in case of convex mirror the focal length will be in positive sign. From mirror formula, we have 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon u plus 1 upon v. So, 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon f minus 1 upon u. It is equal to 1 upon 15 minus 1 upon minus 10. So, 1 upon v is equal to 5 by 30 v is equal to plus 6 centimeter. This plus sign indicates that image is formed behind the mirror 
and it is on the right side of the mirror here and when the image is formed behind the mirror it is virtual and erect what is the nature of the image this positive this positive sign indicates that it is formed behind the mirror and when this image is formed behind the mirror it indicates that the image is virtual and erect what is the position of the image then image is formed 6 cm from the mirror behind it and it is virtual and erect yes this is your answer now define the following terms related to spherical mirrors center of curvature pole curvature and also define principal focus of a convex mirror what do we mean by center of curvature it is the center of the sphere of which the reflecting surface forms the path and it is denoted by c suppose this is concave mirror this forms the part of a sphere yes and the center of this sphere of which the reflecting surface forms the part is called as center of curvature and it is also same in case of convex mirror also this surface also forms a part of a sphere here and the center of this sphere is called as center of curvature next the pole the geometrical central point of the reflecting surface is called pole this is called as pole this is the central point of the reflecting surface and it is called as pole now aperture the width of the reflecting spherical surface is called as aperture this is called as aperture this is the width of the reflecting spherical surface next what is principal focus of a convex mirror it is the point on the principal axis where the rays of light incident parallel to the principal axis of the convex mirror appear to diverge from a point of the reflection suppose this is a convex mirror a parallel rays of light these parallel rays of light after falling on the reflecting surface of the convex mirror they get diverged it appears as if these are diverging from this point yes here the rays are not actually meeting here but it appears as if these rays are getting diverged from this point and this point on the principal axis is called as principal focus of the convex mirror this is about the principal focus of a convex mirror and this is all about the important questions and pyqs of the chapter light reflection and refraction